Now, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss 001 video. And welcome back to another episode of Flight Simulator Review. Was that good? Yeah, no, of course. Infinite Flight has recently come out with another major update of their flight simulator for mobile, as you can see. Yeah, we are in my phone again. And uh, you guys are always keep asking me to check these new updates out. So let's do that today real quick. So uh, yeah, let me just talk about this simulator from scratch, kind of. Okay, let's just imagine we've just downloaded this flight simulator from the App Store or Play Store, if you will, for five bucks in US dollars, of course. Wait, no, disclaimer. Um, right now, the flight simulator costs only 99 cents on the App Store and Play Store. It used to be actually $5. Right now, it's 99 cents. Probably it's some kind of Christmas sale or something. But just so you know. And now we are greeted with this menu. We can do some things. Oh, perhaps we can only do one thing, and that's fly solo. As you can see, flying online in the multiplayer or being an air traffic controller is only for the pros that uh, give 10 bucks per month to the flight simulator or, or 80 per year which is quite a bit of money actually for such a mobile game, but maybe it's worth it. Let's check it out later on. So yeah, without subscribing, you get a few planes, not any of the newer planes that have been released recently. So here's the plane that you get uh, pretty much a, a wide selection. You know, you have an A-10. Uh, actually, that model is quite nice. Uh, you have some general aviation planes like the Cessna 1872, but you have some airliners as well, 737, 747, A380, but that's pretty much the, all that is to it. Now, Infinite Flight is also known for for being able to fly globally. As you can see right here, we have a globe in front of us, but obviously, if you don't want to pay 10 bucks per month, you only have these uh, selected regions here to fly in uh, that are green here. That, that's, uh, you know, California and um, some other parts of the US. And for some reason, South Carolina, I don't know. Uh, you have a little bit of Europe as well, but that's pretty much all you get for the five bucks you pay on the App Store, or 99 cents as of right now. <laughs> Let's just pay these 10 bucks and, you know, enjoy the flight simulator in its full fashion. 10 euros later. I'm really bad at this French accent. All right, there we go. We are now 10 bucks poorer, but we at least now have the pro version of the flight simulator. You see, this whole long introduction, I'm pretty much just doing because I'm really not a fan of these subscriptions, you know? I mean, I've already said this. I've spent around uh, 500 bucks on this flight simulator because I just kept the subscription running and I really never played this. So I just wanted to show you how, what this actually is. But let's go ahead and fly solo and especially check out the very newly released 757 that we we have here. There we go, 757-200, released or updated in December 2020. That's exactly what we're looking for. Where can we go? Uh, here we have a lot of liveries to choose from. Let's go for, um, Monarch. Is that even a thing still? I think it went bankrupt. Okay, whatever. All right, now, since we are actually paying money, we have the global map available. And actually, this is quite nice. We do have literally any airport in the world here in the flight simulator, so that's all right. Um, where can we go? Let's go to a very beautiful place in Switzerland or something. Maringen works just fine. And check out the 757. All right, there we go. Tap screen to calibrate. Let's just do that real quick. And there we go. We are into the flight simulator. And this is what our 757 looks like. And uh, apparently we don't have any sound. Now we have sound. <clears throat> Never mind. All right, we'll come aboard the 757 again. This one now has, uh, well, the tilted landing gear that the 757 is known for. Uh, let's just see if I can still manage to fly this plane. And this is not particularly working out. Okay, all right. Now this one now has custom some engine sounds, a pretty nice looking cockpit. Um, this is actually an interesting cockpit because this is all glass. I see the normal 757s actually still have a partly analog cockpits. This one now has a full glass. I kind of like this. All right, interesting. That's the 757 for you, but let's go ahead and get this plane landed on this not particularly long, but not particularly short runway here at Meiringen Airport, which is an Air Force base. Um, now, yeah, let's take a look at the graphics while we are at it. Well, the ground scenery is is, um, it's pretty much the worst satellite scenery that there is for any flight simulator. It works okay, pretty fine, but nothing more than that, and we're severely stalling out. See, I can actually fly normal planes, but with the mobile simulators, I'm still not very good, you know? The tilting is a little con- <laughs> Yeah, I'm just a noob, like, genuinely. All right, a severely bad landing. I've ne never had a bad landing like this. Okay, but let's try to get this plane stopped. 
There we go. We are stopping just nicely. Even here in Infinite Flight, the 757 has a very, very quick stopping performance, which is actually true to real life. 757 is amazing when it comes to short runways. Actually, now to replay this landing, we have to go to the menu end of flight, and then we can go to replays, and then we can replay this flight, which I don't like at all, but uh, okay, I mean, whatever. All right, there we go. Welcome to our landing here. Let's check it out real quick. Oh, my God. Goodness, Jesus Christ. That was generally, again, the worst landing I've ever done. I mean, I, I can fly real planes now. That's well, not particularly nice anyway. All right, that, that is the new 757 for you. Just like the normal Infinite Flight fashions, none of these buttons here in the cockpits are actually usable. Well, well we, you cannot interact with them. See, I'm pressing the landing gear. Other flight simulators like X-Plane Mobile or Aerofly FS 2021 have this feature. The only thing that is kind of nice here is the live cockpit that we have at least um but the problem i think is especially with this kind of instruments you cannot see your speed when you're holding your phone like this like who's able to tell the speed i mean genuinely i think even in the edit we're gonna have to like zoom into the instruments in order to see the speed properly that's not particularly done well in aerofly at least the camera is zoomed in quite a bit oh that's my subscription confirmation um but other than that that's pretty much all that is the 757 it's you know it's reworked the graphics all look nice the Physics are done quite well, but there is uh, not really much that you can do with the plane. And uh, there's something wrong with the servers again. Literally, <laughs> anytime I play, there's this icon, but whatever. Um, that's the map. Something that's new since we reviewed the flight simulator last time is that there are actually airspaces noted into the sim, which actually looks nice. The airspaces are a little weird, though. Like, they don't actually show you what kind of airspaces it is. For example, here at Frankfurt Airport, the pink lines actually actually show a class Charlie airspaces, but when we press on it, we only have this uh, Lang information service showed up, showing up, so that's weird. At least we have VORs that are actually implemented into the simulator. That's quite nice. But yeah, I mean, another feature we can check out is the multiplayer, which is not a particularly peaceful place, especially when you're starting to play the game and you're in grade one, which is what we are in right now. There's a lot of chaos going on. I mean, we can go to J JFK, you know, there's a lot of traffic there. Let's go to JFK real quick. I mean, that's quite nice. You can explore the planet. That's like the point of this flight simulator, I think. You can explore the planet on your phone, which is, that's quite nice. We have to say that. Now, welcome to multiplayer right now. Welcome to casual server, and we're not gonna read this because whatever. Um, see, here in the multiplayer, we have this ATC icon showing up, and we can uh, communicate with ATC. Here in the casual server, there are no ATC controllers, actually. So there's only Unicom. We can announce stuff. We can give information to other players. For example, we are now saying that we're taxiing to runway 27, which we are not doing. And here we can, uh, you know, explore the graphics of the flight simulator again. Nah, I don't know. This is, again, there are no 3D buildings, which is not good. Uh, and uh, again, the scenery looks like, uh, I don't know. It could, it could be like pixelated food as well. Something pixelated. There's someone taking off. We can watch that triple seven take off here. As far as I can hear right now, he's not using full power. And he's almost at 200 knots. And But there we go. He's taken off. All right, welcome to... Infinite Flight Casual Server. This is the, the definite noob server, <laughs> for sure. All right, now from this online flight that we have made, we have gained zero XP. You can gain XP and then level up to a higher grade to, for example, play on the training or even expert server where there is, for example, ATC service. And uh, as you can see, I already have 287,000 XP, but I'm still grade one because I haven't flown. Like, genuinely, I haven't. <laughs> but that's another story. Now, once you're actually paying for the sim, you have a lot of planes to choose from. You know, all Airbuses, pretty much all Boeing planes that there are, like genuinely. Look at all these Boeing planes. That's pretty much all the planes that X-Plane has in total. But, you know, there are really a lot of planes. And, I mean, that's probably also because uh, these planes are not particularly high quality. I mean, you know, probably don't take super long to develop. Because you don't have to, you know, work through any functioning systems working buttons or anything.
everything. You pretty much have to develop the model and the physics, and that's pretty much all there is to it, from my perspective, okay? Now, the last we work that I actually did was in October 2020, a few months ago with a triple seven. Uh, that one was actually really nice as well. I mean, that's uh, infinite flight for you. At the moment, I think, you know, it's not, it's not great. It's not terrible either. It's definitely not the best flight simulator for mobile. Aeroflies is a lot better. Something that this flight simulator definitely does have is a large community, and as you can see, a lot of players out there. Uh, I mean, you know, there's even a community hub and all that stuff for people to, you know, organize flights together, you know, in the multiplayer. That's like the main strength of Infinite Flight, definitely the multiplayer. But all right, let's maybe use this simulator how it's supposed to use, and that is as a discovering the world tool. It's got a Greenland, like, CC mute. I've already visited this place in some video. 2,600 meters long asphalt runway let's land this triple seven on that airport see that's really fun about this flight simulator discovering interesting places all around the planet even though the planet's uh, graphics suck here <laughs> jesus this could <laughs> I don't know, this is pixelated food. And well, maybe it's better that this flight simulator is so simplistic. I mean, this is nothing close to flying a real plane, of course. I mean, you don't have to use any buttons. You have these unscreen buttons that control some stuff. They have started to get a little bit more realistic by adding a APU engine, but that's all there is to it. <laughs> some lights, and that's all there is to it. So they're taking a little bit of a step further towards the uh, actual realism of planes, but again, this is nothing like flying a real plane. It, it, maybe that's wanted, though. You know, this way everyone can play the flight simulator. Maybe that's the point. But let's go ahead and get this 777 landed down here, which is, uh, yeah. I mean, let's not look back at the 757 landing here. Oh, let's go all the way into the brakes. That really has not, not worked. All right, uh, welcome to our crash triple seven. And well, I mean, I've already said this before. The it doesn't look very beautiful here in the flight simulator. So they could definitely work on the graphic part. <laughs> so yeah, that is the new update of the Infinite Flight Simulator. Even though we're not even in the newly added plane, the 757 right now. But the triple seven is also quite new. I mean, again, said pretty much all the things I had to say about this flight simulator. It maybe is a little bit expensive for what it offers to you. I mean, just look at the graphics. I mean, any somewhat decent PC will run FSX these days, so maybe that's worth checking out if you want more realistic flight simulation. Now, this is not particularly flight simulation. In fact, in the App Store, Infinite Flight is rated as a racing game, not a simming game, which is another interesting fact. Anyway, this flight simulator is nice to play around in. I do have to say that. And uh, I mean, I still kind of like this one. So yeah, guys, Thank you for watching today's video, and I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.